stage is yours. Ladies and gentlemen, thank God I want to thank the Technical Forum, everybody from the Technical Forum, especially these two gentlemen, and Axis. The topic of my presentation is symbiosis in laser technology. Some might know me already, for the others, my name is Alexander Aminidis, and I'm working as an application engineer for Axis Laser Technology, specialized in MINT applications. During my presentation, I will give you a quick and very basic introduction in laser physics. We will speak about some state-of-the-art laser technologies. We will also explain the engraving process at all. Then we did some tests for surface quality and ablation rates. We will assemble all these information and test results. We will have some samples and a conclusion later on. We will speak also about possible future laser technologies and laser sources. And in the end, I want to show you our new developed product. So let's get right into it. What does laser mean? It means light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. The laser radiation stimulates the free electrons in the material. These stimulated electrons then will collide with other electrons and with the atomic nuclei and will something produce like an avalanche reaction. This then is now called an absorption of laser radiation. We will evaporate the material at that point, we will start to engrave. The duration of a laser pulse, we call it the pulse duration, determines the thermal influence in the material. We see that here in yellow color as a heat affected zone. That means as long as the laser stays there, as uh, bigger the heat affected zone will be in the material. So we have here two current state-of-the-art laser technologies. We will, during my presentation, focus on these specific two laser sources. The first one is the nanosecond laser. It works from a range from 240 to only three nanoseconds pulse duration. A, pul uh, the, a nanosecond is in comparison to a second only a one millionth time. Because we can change the pulse duration, and we can um, yeah, adapt it to what we want to do, this will give us more variation in laser applications. But even if a nanosecond is so short, it is long enough to create a thermal absorption, a heat affected zone. The second laser source is the picosecond laser. It works with a fixed pulse duration of approximately 10 picoseconds. This time frame is again three digits shorter than a nanosecond. Because of this short time frame, we will create no heat affected zone and no thermal absorption in the material. This will then result in a cold evaporization, a cold engraving with no burr and a very smooth surface. <coughs> to make things a little bit more clear and to show the difference between these two laser sources, we prepared a simulation. On the left side, we see the nanosecond laser. We see also that it stays too long on the surface, so we will build up a heat affected zone. On the right side, the picosecond laser is way shorter, so we have a cold evaporization without any thermal effect on the material. Let's speak a little bit about the engraving process at all. When you, for example, calculate your model or you design by ArtCam and you send it to our machine, the model will then get sliced, an example here on the left side. The slice thickness determines the quality of the engraving. What does the slice thickness mean? It is basically how much material we remove for one single slice. If we choose a lower valued slice thickness, it will result in more slices overall for the engraving, which results in better details, a better quality. If you choose a bigger slice thickness, a bigger number, then we have less values or less slices for the model, and it results in a faster engraving, obviously. It is very important to mention and to understand that the slice thickness is limited. We cannot take any slice thickness or a way too big slice thickness, because otherwise the result will be poorly or completely details or micro engravings could not be displayed correctly. Because of this, for our tests we have now, we want to uh, show you, we prepared three specific laser setups. A fast engraving, a balanced medium engraving, and a fine engraving. Of course, when we choose different values, different slice distances, uh, slice thicknesses, we could always achieve other numbers and other values, but not would be very realistic for a mint typical engraving. So the first test was to um, do the engraving and then measure the surface quality, the surface roughness. What we can see here is that the picosecond laser in comparison to the nanosecond laser gives us always a better quality in surface roughness. 
We can also see that when we look at the fine engraving, at the numbers there, that the nanosecond laser is very close to the picosecond laser result. But we can also see that if the uh, engraving uh, speed increases, so we have faster engraving, the roughness will, for the nanosecond laser, get very poorly. Then the next test was to calculate the abrasion rate. That means how much material we can remove in a millimeter cubic per minute. Again, we tested with these three specific laser setups and then we calculated the ablation rate. Again, we could see that the picosecond laser always gives us a faster or engraving or a higher ablation rate than the nanosecond laser does, especially for the fine engraving. If you look at the numbers, if you compare them, we can see that the picosecond laser has a three times higher ablation rate, which could result in a three times faster engraving. Now let's assemble all this information. The blue line here is the nanosecond laser, the red line is the picosecond laser. On the left side we see the surface quality, the surface roughness in micron millimeter. Obviously here a lower number is better, it's a smoother surface. On the bottom side we have the ablation rate, a bigger number is better because it results in a faster engraving. Now when we look here at the blue line, the nanosecond laser, we see that if the ablation rate increases, the surface quality will get quickly very poor. For the picosecond laser, it's that it stays approximately the same. It just slightly increases, but we can also see that the ablation rate is very high with the picosecond laser. Now let's have a look at some pictures. We did a 500 times magnification picture of the fine engraving uh, result. On the left side, we see the nanosecond laser. On the right side, the picosecond laser. Just by looking at the surfaces, we can see that the picosecond laser surface looks more even, more smooth. Then we analyzed the edge of the engraving for our test. On the top side with a red arrow, we see the result of a nanosecond laser. On the bottom side with a green arrow, the result of a picosecond laser. We can see that we have no burr around our engraving with a picosecond laser. This is very important because not only the picosecond laser gives us the advantage of a better surface quality and a better ablation rate, it also decreases the post-processing. We don't need any glass beads blasting or sand blasting or cleaning. We don't have to repolish the dye after engraving. It makes things afterwards also easier. For micro-engraving, it was obviously that because of the cold evaporization, the picosecond laser gives us here a sharper, much more enhanced details and micro-engraving results. Obviously, the nanosecond laser is also able to do very small engravings and a lot of details as seen in last year's presentation. Now let's have a quick um, conclusion at that point. It is very important to understand that a nanosecond laser can do absolutely everything a picosecond laser is able to do. Because we can change the pulse duration with the nanosecond and we have this heat affected zone, it gives us more variation, especially in terms of frosting. But the picosecond laser, when doing an engraving, is much more faster, gives us a better quality and is more precise. The tilted high line, what we call it, seen here on the left side, something similar to uh, Artcam's presentation. We developed something like this with them together. This is basically, like explained, a complete flat marking we can add to the um, stamping die, for example, to the tool with our laser, and of course can strike it to a coin. In terms of structure, the rainbow color, for example, is just a structure. We also figured out and experienced that the rainbow colors with the picosecond laser are much more brighter and gives us stronger colors. This is, again, because of the cold ablation. Now let's speak a little bit about future possible laser technologies. These laser technologies are already available on the market. We try to experience what is the pros and cons with these laser sources. We have the sub nano laser. It works in a range of a low nanosecond to a high picosecond range. This laser comes with a very compact and small design. It is air-cooled. It can reduce the heat-affected zone in the material, but it never can completely remove it. Then we have also the femtosecond laser. It has an even shorter pulse duration, even shorter time frame than the Pico one. We experienced incredible good details, but we figured also out that when you do a deep engraving or have a very big engraving, we start to see some mistakes in the surface. For now, we will see what this will look like in a couple of years. 
And now I want to present you our new product. It's the all new Piranha Micron Pico of Femto. This machine is completely new developed. It has a very compact design which fits in all the ultra short pulse laser sources. We have this machine here at the fair, so if you want to have a look on it, if you want to have a live demonstration, please feel free to visit us at our booth. But unfortunately, this specific machine is not available to Poland Mint Shimowit was the quickest one and already bought it. Thanks. <laughs> Again, I would invite you to our booth here at the World Money Fair for a discussion or a sharing thought. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much.